What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my first impression and analysis of the Three Hopes banner which also has rearmed Liv. So the first unit on this banner is going to be Male Chess who is a sword infantry unit. This is a very competitive class but still Chess is able to stand out with his crimson blades. So this is a 11 might weapon which gives you plus 5 speed and also has the penalty of minus 5 defense and resistance. This is a dual phase weapon which means that he can quad attack both in the player phase and in the enemy phase if he can double you. He gets two effects out of this weapon depending on his HP level. So if he has got 20% HP or more then he can get special cooldown charge plus one per attack. And this special cooldown charge is going to be both on foe's attacks and his own attacks. And this is really good because he can essentially retaliate back with a 2 cooldown special like Moonbow on his brave hit which is gonna be really good for getting the kills. And then the second part allows him to get 40% damage reduction from foe's first attack if he has got 40% or more HP. So this is really synergetic for survival and being at that certain HP threshold. So getting that damage reduction means that it is going to be a bit hard to kill him in a single hit and then he can just trigger his brave hit and trigger a 2 cooldown special like Moonbow or Ruptured Sky on his brave hit with this weapon. So Shez is going to be functioning in both phases and he can of course function as a pretty good vantage unit in Aetherate's Chaos as well because of this kind of weapon. You don't really need to give him support of Brave Lucina or like Thor for the special acceleration and you can just run someone else like Muspel for example so that he can get the true damage so, and the damage reduction that he gets is a good fail safe in case he fails to kill someone in the vantage range. So yeah, Shez is definitely a pretty strong sword infantry unit and he also has speed defense bulwark as the new skill that he comes with. We of course saw the attack defense version on Asker and speed defense bulwark is going to be a pretty good skill on a lot of units especially with the new arcane sword which Lyft can provide. He also has attack speed oath 4 which is really good to see in the normal summoning pool because this skill is just so stacked because not only can trigger within two spaces of an ally to give you the visible buffs but it can also enable the teleportation and also give you more offenses in combat. So this is going to be a really good skill for a lot of units and I'm honestly pretty happy with the design of Shez because a lot of modern sword infantry units pretty much fall into the category of having tempo skill, null follow up, damage reduction. I mean Shez also has damage reduction but at the very least he has got this dual phase brave weapon which does make him a bit more unique. So he does have pretty simple playstyle and the healing from the bulwark skill does have good synergy with the HP thresholds of his weapon so that can just keep him healthy so that he can trigger his weapon for the both effects for getting the special charges and also for getting that damage reduction. As for his stats, I think he's going to be having good base attack at 43 and he's going to be fast at base 41 or above. And this weapon does give him plus 5 speed as it is so it is pretty easy to quad attack with Chess because of the base kit that he comes with. And because Gen 7 melee infantries have high BST, his bulk is not going to be too bad but he does get the penalty to his defense and resistance with this weapon. So that is going to be the first unit of this banner. Here we see Shez quad attacking this red Fafnir so his weapon is in action. Next up we have got Monica as a blue infantry mage. So Monica did not have very huge role in three houses but in three hopes her fate is completely different because of the alternate timeline and the ramifications of the three houses lords not meeting up with Pilot. So here she is a blue infantry mage and she's of course blue to beat up Hubert and she has got wind genesis as her preferred weapon. So this provides her with minus some special cooldown and at sort of turn she can provide herself with the plus 6 attack and speed buff and also the desperation status for one turn. So this is going to be a visible buff which means that it does have good synergy with the ideal skill and because the desperation status is a visible status it is going to be susceptible to duo Thor's duo button so that it could be erased. So just keep that in mind for summoner duels gameplay. And she can also get plus 6 attack and speed in combat with this weapon and also inflicts resistance and speed penalty on the opponent in combat depending on their max special cooldown count. So basically the formula is that she doubles the foe's maximum special cooldown count and then subtracts it from Levin which pretty much means that she punishes a lot of the foes which have low cooldown specials because she's going to be able to get minus 9 speed and resistance penalty on an opponent if they have a one turn special which a lot of modern units do and at minimum she's going to be getting minus 3 debuffs with this effect. 
So I think this is a more of a reference to her not doing too much damage to Edelgard because we see Edelgard usually running high cooldown specials like Yield Force in the summer version and her legendary version. So that's why she probably does not do too much damage and instead tries to do a lot more damage to units who have low cooldown specials. Just a theory, uh, but definitely a pretty unique effect. And then she's got Glimmer and Attack Speed Ideal 4 and Speed Resistance Tempo. So if you're a big Lysithia fan and you just refine Brave Lysithia, then this is pretty much going to be the best lobby skill for Brave Lysithia. Because her weapon already does a lot of the things that you need out of an offensive unit. And Tempo Effect is just perfect with her new weapon refine that gives her that minus one special cooldown. And Brave Lysithia at this point is just missing a special that can pierce through the damage reduction honestly. So she's going to be providing good fodder. So overall Monica is going to be a pretty good blue infantry mage and she can run some other sloppy skills like the tempo skill or even null follow up and still get the desperation out of her weapon. And keep in mind that this desperation does not need her to be at the 75% HP. This is going to be a full HP desperation like you get from a lot of harmonic and duo skills. Um, so yeah, tempo skill is pretty good on her and she also functions as a good fodder. She's not really insane but definitely pretty nice. We have definitely seen quite a bit of uh, blue infantry mages with Ascended Ishtar, Legendary Deidra, and then Deidra getting her weapon refined. But Monica is going to be stacking up a lot of speed so I do expect her to have like base 43, base 44 speed and also, you know, fences for that and then decent resistance. Then we move on to the Ascended unit of this banner and if you do summon them then you're going to be getting an Ascended Floret. And keep in mind that on these Ascended units you don't really have to spend any kind of Floret to get the Ascended asset. Hilda is an Axe Infantry unit and it's interesting to me that they're probably going to be making the outfits of Three Hopes units as the Ascended units to sell a lot of these banners because of course a lot of the Three Hopes characters are quite popular and they do have the significant change in their outfits. So here she's got Fuming Free Kugel and you know now it makes sense why Hilda got a weapon refined so early on. So Fuming Free Kugel gives her minus one special cooldown and at start of combat for allies within two spaces, if the ally has got more defense than Hilda or if Hilda has not entered in any kind of combat, then she can basically give them the Drive Spectrum plus 3 and can also give them the Drive 20% damage reduction from Foe's first attack. So that is the main difference between Ascended Hilda and the original Hilda's support effect. Original Hilda has got the Drive follow-up negation while this Hilda provides you with the damage reduction which is going to be useful for a lot of units and she also provides you with plus 3 to all of your stats. So that is the support part of her weapon and essentially the lazy part I guess. And then the second part of her weapon requires her to be solo or at least not be near any kind of ally with more defense than her. And if that is met, then she can get plus 6 attack and speed in combat and also get 40% damage reduction herself from foe's first attack. And finally, she can get true damage based on her speed. And the true damage that she gets is going to be depending on the maximum special cooldown count of Hilda herself. So if she runs something like Vital Astra, then the maximum special cooldown is 1. So she's going to be able to get 30% true damage based on her speed. She does come with Luna, so it becomes a 2 cooldown special with her weapon and she's able to get 40% true damage based on her speed. And if you run a high cooldown special like maybe Aether, then you're going to be able to get 60% true damage based on her speed for a 4 cooldown special. Keep in mind that this true damage is not going to be applied to the AoE specials. So unfortunately, she's not going to be able to do that huge AoE damage uh, with this kind of true damage speed based skill. Uh, but still overall, she's going to be having much better damage output than the usual Hilda. And original Hilda does not have minus one special cooldown. So this Hilda can run Vital Astra a lot easily. And then she's got Luna Attack Speed Solo 4, which does have good synergy with the condition of her weapon. And then she has got a new damage reduction skill in Velocity 3. So this is basically the amalgamation of two different skills. So previously we saw Hit and Run and Damage Reduction combined for Close Call. And we have seen a bit of Wrath and Damage Reduction combined for Spurn. And this is basically the combination of half tempo skill along with damage reduction. Now half tempo basically means null guard which means that you're going to be able to ignore the guard effects of the opponent from their stand skills, from their rue skills and things of that nature. So it does make it pretty easy for you to trigger your specials against a lot of the tanks which run the guard skill in their weapon or in their skill set. And this is easily the best damage reduction skill you can run because 
the Null Guard effect is surely coveted and you're not going to be spending any extra skill set on running and getting that Null Guard. Um, so it is speed based damage reduction that we know and love and I guess hate um, and it can go up to 40% based on our speed. So Null Guard is definitely pretty good especially when you run Vital Astra so it is going to be a lot easier for you to loop Vital Astra in that case and that is definitely going to be a pretty potent special for her. And overall, I think that Hilda is going to be following the stat spread of her original self. And it's just going to be focusing on the offenses and not really too much on her defenses. She doesn't even get extra defense out of this weapon, but she of course gets two forms of damage reduction, which can stack up for 64% damage reduction on foe's first attack. And if you run Vital Astra on her, then you're pretty much going to be able to get three layers of damage reduction, which can stack up for like 75% uh, damage reduction but of course that is a bit too too much so she is missing null follow up from her base kit so that is something that you can run uh, but of course vital astra also gives you a lot of damage based on her speed and it is in her best interest to stack up speed as it is with this kind of weapon so that she can get more true damage with her weapon and godlike reflexes is also an option with hilda of course so overall Hilda is going to be a pretty nice unit with that true damage in her weapon and she is also a supportive unit with that drive damage reduction that she can provide. Um, so she can function in a hybrid sort of way. She's of course not a must have or something like that but if you're a big fan of her or you like her then she's going to be functioning pretty well in combat and also outside of combat with her support. And finally we have a rearmed hero in Liv with his arcane sword. So I'll be covering the Fae channel and the things about a rearmed hero in detail in that video. But overall, I'm just going to be giving you my opinion on, uh, you know, rearmed Liv. So here he is as a sword cavalier this time, and he does have a different weapon. And a rearmed hero can basically provide you the inheritance once uh, for his weapon and still not disappear from your barracks. So as a Sword Cavalier, he's of course going to be facing a lot of competition as a nuke from Brave Selif, who is just absolutely insane and extremely hard to tank. Um, on the other hand, I think Lif is going to be a lot more bulkier. So he has got Arcane Eleuthenir, which is an Arcane Sword, which means that it could be given to the other Sword units. Again, I'll be going in detail in the Fae channel video. And this weapon has got five main effects. So it has got minus one special cooldown. It gives you minus six attack and defense debuff on the opponent in combat. It has got the guaranteed follow-up attack built into it, as well as follow-up negation. So this is called an Omni Breaker effect because you're able to make your own follow-ups while the foe cannot. And it also provides you with the guard effect in combat against the opponent. So these effects are so good for a fast unit as well as a slow unit. So for a slow unit, they are just freed up from running quick repose. And for a fast unit, they could just not run null follow up because as it is, with the auto follow up, they're going to be able to double a lot of the slower units who have follow up negation. And against a lot of the faster opponents who do not have null follow up, they can just stop their follow up attacks. And guard is something that a lot of units do appreciate so that they don't get nuked by their special. So this weapon is really, really stacked. And if you think about it, this is kind of like a Hector's small tip weapon. Um, it just trades the deep of neutralization with the guard effect, which is pretty insane. And it's available as an irritable sword. Um, so again, I'm going to be going in full detail with all of the units who can make the best use out of this. So that is going to be a topic for a different video. But focusing on Arcane Liv as himself as a unit, he here has got Open the Future, which does become a two cooldown special with his weapon. And then with Deadly Balance, he can basically retaliate back with it. He also comes with the Clash skill, which we have seen on Brave Selif. But this is the attack defense version of it. So he can get up to plus 10 attack and defense with this skill and also get attack and defense debuff neutralization, which is always really good in the case that he gets panicked for the visible buffs that he gets out of the menace skill. And we have seen deadly balance on the original lift as well. So if he's above or at 50% HP or if there is any kind of penalty present on the unit themselves, then he can inflict minus 5 attack and defense debuff on the foe and he gets the special acceleration on the foe's attacks. So again, that's pretty much the way he can retaliate back with open the future and recover the HP. So pretty good defensively. And then finally, he has got attack defense menace. So he can get the arcane Eleuthenir and attack defense menace at the same time. Um, and that is going to be pretty good for inheritance. Again, I'll be going in full detail, but overall, like as a unit lift is going to be pretty good. Uh, depending on what kind of stats he ends up with. 
because in the Tempest Trial, he has a lot of speed for some reason. And here it just seems like he's going to be attack and defense focused. So I think they're probably going to be reallocating some stats. And he's probably going to be having, you know, stats similar to his original version, where he has got decent speed, but he mainly focuses on his defense and attack stat. So he can function well as a Sword Cavalier, but he's going to be missing out on the Kanto, uh, which, you know, a lot of Cavaliers do need. So he's more of the enemy phase unit because of not having that Kanto in a sense. Um, but yeah, competition is definitely pretty fierce in terms of Brave Selif because it doesn't matter that Brave Selif does not have this much um, defense as Lif. At the end of the day, he can be extremely annoying with his Miracle and still survive a lot of the attacks um, that even Lif may not survive, like effective damage from like Brave Arica, for example. And of course, with the Immortal Selif build, you can just loop your Miracle essentially, which could be really annoying. Um, but yeah, definitely a pretty nice unit and also extremely good mechanic with extremely good fodder. Huge fan of him with his design and overall I like book 3 the most out of all of the books. And I hope that Rearmed Air can also happen in future and also Rearmed Thersier. Overall this banner is pretty good so if you're a fan of any of these units, these units are going to be good in combat but they're not going to be anything too insane. But what is insane is their fodder. Like the fodder on this banner is ridiculous. We have got male chess with the bulwark skill and the oath for skill that he can get at the same time. We've got Monica who has got the ideal skill and the tempo skill that he can get at the same time. Hilda provides you with velocity 3. And of course, rearmed Liv provides you with his arcane sword. And keep in mind that if you summon multiple copies of uh, rearmed Liv, you can essentially use every single copy to inherit his arcane Eleutheria to a unit of yours. And once you have done his inheritance, then you can merge them up. So do not merge them up before using his weapon for inheritance. So that is the whole gimmick of a rearmed hero where their fodder could be used and they will not disappear out of your barracks for the first time. Um, and then you can after that just merge them up once you've used their fodder. So yeah, definitely a heads up. This banner does have two sparks, so you can spark once for the ascended hero and then for the rearmed hero I suppose. But the first spark is going to be the cheapest one because of the forging bonds ticket. So it is going to be costing you like 135 orbs considering you summon the full circles with the tickets that you get after forging bonds. And then it is going to be a bit more expensive to get the second spark. And this banner and badge does bring you quests which can give you female Chez at 5 star and 2 copies of her. Um, so that is pretty good and the weapon design of female Chez is a bit similar to but I don't think she's going to be having the same effect uh, with that dual phase brave weapon. And she's an axe unit in this version and we don't really know her skills or her weapon or anything like that as of yet. So we'll have to wait for the data mine and I'll be covering this in a banner review. And then we're also going to be getting Holtz as a grand her battle unit. We did see his stats in the Fae channel itself. So he's going to be having like 190 BSA after the first merge, which is going to be amazing as a scoring unit in arena game modes. So he's going to be having better score than, um, you know, Yenfei that a lot of people built up for arena. And I think he's overall just going to be better than Yenfei because he doesn't have distant counter and he's just going to be having more attack and speed. Uh, so his preferred weapon is Warrior Sword and he also has attack speed 03 and attack speed ideal 3 in his base kit. He does get Spectrum plus 5 with this weapon in the combat and I also saw that he got additional plus 5 attack and speed in combat on top of like his ideal skill, the oath skill and everything else. So I think he probably has bonus doubler or at the very least just attack and speed bonus doubler because he does come with an oath skill so it would make sense uh, to give him that kind of effect in his preferred weapon. And if it's a full bonus doubler then that is amazing for just running the bonus doubler sacred seal on him. So yeah, pretty excited for Holtz and what he brings to the table. He is going to be a sword infantry unit. Um, so this badge does bring three sword units uh, with Liv and then male Chez and then him. So going to be covering him in full detail in his own unit review. And let me know in the comments what you think about this banner and rearmed heroes. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure to share this with your friends if they're just trying to understand the base kits and the base weapons of these units because I do try and explain them efficiently. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member. 
And for more Faye videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as female shares if she ends up getting a more shafted weapon. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.